just better. Hello my flaky, buttery friends, my name is Arlo and welcome to another edition of the Nintendo News Roundup. I am gonna talk about the news at you. Here we go, you can't stop me. According to Nintendo, Skyward Sword HD is going to have enhanced motion controls, uh, presumably just to make them better and more accurate. They have not really detailed exactly what that means. This was all just kind of in a little tweet. Um, so, I mean, that's cool. I never had a problem with the motion controls. They seemed pretty accurate, but I suppose um, anything to make them become, un you know, need recalibrating, you know, less often, like, that'd be cool. So we'll just have to wait and see on that one. According to a number of different sources, Nintendo is gearing up for a very, very big 2021. Bloomberg published a report on this. They seem to, they seem to be very interested in, in Nintendo right now. They do a lot of reports on this whole thing. Uh, they're doubling down on the Switch Pro thing, or at least some sort of uh, new model, and they claim that Nintendo is going to have a record-breaking year. Um, oh, and according to somebody, the report or whatever, who even knows, um, a lot of, uh, let's see, much of this year's lineup of new games remains unannounced. So according to this, Nintendo still has a lot of surprises for this year. I mean, it's not really surprising. I know there's going to be more directs. Um, you know, the last chunk of the year is a little bit empty. We don't know exactly what the holiday title is necessarily going to be. Um, but that is interesting to hear. Uh, I would say that Animal Crossing plus Pandemic is probably not something that's going to be replicated. It's hard for me to believe that Nintendo will be breaking more records this year compared to last year. Um, that would be cool though, who knows? Will like some big game that we don't know what it is yet, plus a new Switch model, will that do what it's supposed to do and rejuvenate sales and make them even bigger than ever? Who knows? Speaking of the little old Nintendo Switch, apparently in the US it is the second best-selling console ever. This is in terms of, uh, you know, money made, not necessarily units sold. It just passed the DS, and uh, and that's not surprising because the DS just sold for less money. You know, obviously the Switch, you know, 300 bucks or whatever. Uh, and uh, the Wii is the only thing that's ahead of it, and I have no doubt at all that it will overtake the Wii. So always breaking them records. Always breaking them records. Samsung is starting an initiative to sell more OLED screens. Uh, right now they primarily sell them for TVs, but they want to kind of break out of just TVs and go into every market possible, including, of course, game consoles. This all by itself is not necessarily Nintendo news, but it does support the I, the rumors and all that that we've had before about how they want to, you know, they're going to be providing OLED screens to a new kind of Switch. It's just another little piece of the puzzle and another little bit of info to kind of corroborate what we've all been kind of gathering recently. Pokemon Go is testing a feature with some players, uh, which allows them to see what might be in an egg that they want to hatch. Um, it is very possible that this is uh, them trying to sort of address the whole, you know, basically the gotcha loot box controversy. Um, I don't know how effective that'll be or if they'll end up rolling it out to everybody, but it's, I don't know, something I guess. In other Pokemon news, the uh, DJ Pikachu, it's a thing, look here, there's a Pikachu, he's a DJ, did a whole song. The song's actually pretty good. It's, it's like a remix of like some of the Red and Blue songs. It's good, good job, DJ Pikachu. In considerably less pleasant Pikachu related news, uh, someone is selling a uh, th uh, th this, this thing, it's a Pikachu, but it's long and weird. It's like a Senate, this is a Senate, Senate Pikachu. Uh, it's weird, it comes in different sizes. This is not an officially licensed product, um, which is actually surprising because usually when you see these like really weird Pokemon plushies and stuff, they're usually official. They, I, they just like really weird stuff in Japan. I don't know, but uh, apparently this is uh, not necessarily legal, um, but it comes, I mean, gosh, look, at, look how long this one is. Uh, according to Nintendo Life here, uh, its name translates through Google Translate to Dangerous Pikachu. The, ja the Japanese website uh, describes the longest Pikachu as a very long pikachu insect elf. Uh, wow. Pretty accurate, I guess. So this wonderful mother fan here has created uh, mock-ups of what a, uh, an, a remake of the original mother game might look like uh, with a very very, very wonderful art style. Um, this kind of goes along. It's very like kind of toy-like and it's great because you know, people, you know, all the old promotional stuff of like the canceled uh, mother game, it's like kind of claymation. Everybody wants to see this. This is just free. This is a free idea for Nintendo. Everybody wants to see it. Everyone is behind this. Make a game that looks just like this. Everyone's gonna be really happy. So I don't know if they'll ever do it, but we can at least look at these little screenshots and dream. That's so cute. Oh, I love it. I love it. I would play that. I've never played any of the mother games. I would play that. 
In a number of territories, Nintendo is offering a little uh, gold coins bonus for people subscribing to Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, I got excited when I saw this because I thought it was going to be like uh, like a better rewards program. Because right now, like when you buy stuff on the eShop, you get like 5% back or something. Is that just for NSO members? I can't remember. Um, I, was, I thought it was going to be a more substantial thing like that and as a way to kind of incentivize people to get NSO. Uh, but it's not. It's just like a percentage of the purchase price of the subscription. So it's like a couple bucks or something. So that's a little lame. I remember on the on the Wii U, they had like that thing where if you get the fancy the the deluxe Wii U or whatever, you get you get like into the program of like earning money back. I made a bunch of money with that. It was really cool. So yeah, I don't know. This is a thing. If you haven't signed up, you could get a couple bucks back or something. I don't know. Nintendo is hosting the final Ninja speed run in Super Mario Maker 2. And um by itself it's not super amazing news, uh, but as far as we know, as Nintendo Life pointed out, thank you, Nintendo Life, uh, this is the last planned, uh, at, at least announced, content update or thing in general for Super Mario Maker 2. Uh, so, we have to ask ourselves, is this the end? Is this the end of Super Mario Maker 2 support? Uh, I don't know. I hope not, but probably. <laughs> Some Animal Crossing related news, as usual, uh, Nintendo is about to release the one year anniversary update. Not as substantial as I would expect from a one year anniversary update. I kind of thought that most major uh, updates and expansions and content would come within the first year. Usually like the first year is what they wanna, they wanna support their game and after that it kind of like slows down. Um, it's not a lot. I think the biggest thing is just changes to like the design process, which is really cool. Like more design slots and a better app and all that stuff. Really cool. Just still missing a lot of features that people are looking forward to. So I don't know. I mean, there's still technically time. I don't know how much longer they're going to support it and add new stuff, but, uh, there you go. In Europe, Animal Crossing New Horizons had the best first year ever for any Nintendo game. Just another one of those records to, I mean, like, they don't even mean anything anymore. Animal Crossing was the highest selling whatever in the whole, I don't know, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's the best selling game ever, I know, I know. Nintendo was launching a, uh, an Animal Crossing uh, tour creator where you can kind of like take your island and make like a little, like a cool like little image kind of thing with screenshots of your island, uh, just kind of a way to share it. And I think that's cool. It's a way to kind of share uh, your island without, you know, someone actually having to go there or you making your own videos or whatever. Um, unfortunately, this is only planned to be a thing through the end of the year. Not sure why. Doesn't seem like the sort of thing you'd want to limit. I don't know. I just like, what's the benefit? That's not even a FOMO thing. What that you, <laughs> as long as this thing is there and as long as people are playing Animal Crossing, this just exists as a free marketing tool for people to share their stuff. So I don't know why they would want to just delete it at the end of the year. I literally don't understand that at all, but that's uh, Nintendo, I guess. In New York, there is a video game museum called the Strong Museum's World Video Game Hall of Fame, and uh, the original Animal Crossing is up for inclusion. It is competing against uh, a number of other, you know, pretty uh, pretty important games. And uh, it is interesting to see, I mean, like, obviously it's because of New Horizons, because Animal Crossing has become so big, it seems that this Hall of Fame, uh, you know, they go back to the original game that started it. You know, you got Call of Duty and stuff on there. Yet to be seen whether or not it'll win, um, but apparently other Nintendo games have, have won and been included before, so it seems fairly likely. Back in October, one Julian Terry released a, an Animal Crossing themed horror short on YouTube called Don't Peek. I won't spoil it for you, but it's about a girl playing Animal Crossing and some spooky stuff happens. Uh, I didn't hear about this until just now. Interesting, uh, but apparently it is being adapted into a full motion picture. Uh, not incredibly surprising. It's a, you know, it, it's that name I think is the main thing. Just don't pee. It's just one of, it's just one of those good horror movie names. People love the paranormal activity. They love like the, the tech spin on horror. You know, it's very, it's a, it's a very catchy, very hooky. I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever that the, uh, the full movie will not feature Animal Crossing. <laughs> It'll probably be some fake game, some generic kind of game that looks like Animal Crossing. It's understood to be like Animal Crossing, but not actually Animal Crossing because there's no possible way that Nintendo would allow it. They probably hate that this exists. They probably are just seething <laughs> looking at this, thinking about how they might stop it. 
Um, but anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. Gonna be a full movie. Animal Crossing! It's not supposed to be scary, it's supposed to be nice! What are they doing to it? Oh no! What are we gonna do? An Ace Attorney-themed orchestrated concert is going to be uh, streamed next month. Um, that's pretty cool. It, it sounds like the sort of thing that was probably planned um, back when concerts were a thing that we were doing, and I don't know if maybe just they just got tired of waiting or something, but they're gonna be streaming it, and um, obviously this kind of thing is very expensive to put together, so they are charging like 42 bucks to watch it, and it's like, I get that, I get you got a charge to do it, but at the same time, like, this is a thing on the internet, it's gonna be really hard to prevent people from sharing it, you just screen capture, and there you go, I'm sure most people <laughs> are not going to want to pay, they're just going to wait for someone to upload it somewhere. Which is a shame, you know, they deserve to have their work, you know, paid for and all that stuff. Um, so I don't really know, I mean like, here's hoping it ends up being a good success, because that's a pretty cool thing. Hey everyone, Kane here with a little interruption. Something that makes this story a little bit more interesting to me is that as far as I know, this is the first time that the name The Great Ace Attorney has ever been said in English in any kind of official capacity by Capcom or anything Ace Attorney related or otherwise, possibly adding fuel to the fire that these games will be getting ported sometime soon. I don't want to get myself or anyone watching this too excited, but some people are even wondering if maybe those games will get announced at the end of this orchestra thingy, which would be really cool. I myself have been wanting to see these games get ported for years, and it really does seem like it is a it is a when, not an if. Why did they say the name in English? Weird. I don't know. Pretty cool. Anyway, that's enough from me. Back to Arla. Super Nintendo World has officially launched. Uh, Nintendo had a little a little party. It was a fun little video. Shigeru Miyamoto's there. A little, like, celebration. And, um, oh man, I was watching the video and I was watching it on my phone on like a really little screen and I was like looking at Shigeru Miyamoto and like just in the back of my mind, like the the the, the Nintendo of Japan president um, is off to the side and also wearing a hat like Miyamoto and just like for a second, I was only half thinking about it and I thought it was Iwata. Just, I don't know, just like this, just a part of me that's just like, yeah, Shigeru Miyamoto's here and like Iwata's over there, right? And then like, I just kind of like, I just remembered, you know, you know, like you're not really thinking about it that hard. It's just kind of like a vague feeling and I realized that it wasn't and it made me sad. <laughs> so it's a little note about that. Uh, it's cool that it opened though. Apparently within the park, there is a mysterious DK door that leads nowhere. Uh, people have been wondering what that's about, um, but there have long been rumored uh, to be DK stuff in the park. Um, you know, a while back there was the data leak, the data miners found DK assets in the app. Um, all, the, all this stuff, it, you know, feels pretty inevitable. Um, so they're like, is this gonna lead to a DK part of the park later? It seems pretty guaranteed now because <laughs> aerial views of the park, you can tell that there's a really nice little spot already carved out that is immediately connected to the DK door. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's like 98.9% .9 guaranteed that there's gonna be a DK part of the park, which is really cool. A hardware modder has created the smallest N64 ever. This is a real functioning N64 that actually uses the cartridges, the real N64 cartridges, which is pretty cool. Um, the, they made this uh, a while ago, but apparently the Guinness Book of World Records recently acknowledged it as the smallest N64 ever, which seems weird to me. I feel like I thought the whole point of records was it was something that people like were trying. <laughs> like multiple people were trying. I don't know, maybe there's a whole community about trying to make small N64s. I don't really know, but I, more power to them, I guess. I mean, that's cool. I want one of these, it's neat. So, Sony bought Evo. Why did I not hear about this anywhere else? I only saw it on Nintendo Life when I'm looking for Nintendo news. Sony bought Evo, well, it's like Sony owns Evo now, which is pretty weird. Um, so uh, it's yet to be seen whether or not this is going to affect, um, you know, whether or not Nintendo is going to want to have their games at Evo. It's likely that it's not, but at the same time, a Nintendo spokesperson was not able to confirm that they still want to. Um, they said they are assessing the, the situation. I know Nintendo's uh, relationship with various tournament communities is not the best right now. I don't know if that's gonna affect things too, but we will just have to wait and see. Octopath Traveler was originally a Switch exclusive, then it went to PC, making it a Switch console exclusive, but it is now heading to Xbox Game Pass, meaning that it is no longer
longer any kind of Nintendo exclusive, which is fine. It's worth mentioning here, but it's not a big deal. I'm not one of those people. I just, the more people that can play the game, the better. It's as simple as that. It's a cool game. Perhaps unsurprisingly, when Sakurai revealed his uh, figure collection of uh, Smash characters and he showed off the Pyra and Mithra figures, this created a renewed interest in those specific figures. Um, so apparently, uh, the company Good Smile, who produced the figures, uh, opened them up again, created a new batch, did pre-orders and all that stuff. Um, unfortunately, they went very, very fast, as you could probably anticipate. <laughs> it is yet to be seen if they will do another batch of them, um, but I certainly hope so. They do look like very, very cool figures. Sometime back, uh, the Switch got its own exclusive Fortnite version of the squi- the, the Switch. I just said the Switch. That's pretty funny. Um, it's not that funny. Uh <laughs> Now it's getting uh, Fortnite Joy-Cons. We're getting some exclusive Fortnite Joy-Cons, which is funny because the Fortnite Switch also kind of had its own exclusive Joy-Cons. So now there's two different kinds of sets of Fortnite Joy-Cons. There you go. A modder has uh, released a video showcasing Breath of the Wild uh, running in 8K with ray tracing. I think most people don't really have a, a, a display in 8K at the moment. However, I do have a 4K TV and boy, it looks glorious. Obviously the game is not completely optimized for it. Um, you know, you get a lot of pop in and stuff, but like you can see the potential. You can see the, the lighting with the ray tracing and just the higher resolution. It is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I cannot wait for Nintendo to get to this point. Even just their old games, even if they don't make games look better graphically, just running them higher. I said it a million times. I don't know. I just look at it. It's beautiful. Oh, oh, I love it. And finally, look at this. Isn't that awesome? I just stumbled upon this on Reddit. I just, that's awesome. Look at that. It's so cool. Apparently, when you change shields, it cancels the parry animation, allowing you to parry again. And if you do it rapidly enough, you can parry all these. It's so cool. It's the coolest. That's so cool. Well, my friends, that is it for this edition of the Nintendo News Roundup. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful day. I love you. And also, goodbye. <laughs>